Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a favorites video, but, but, it's a favorites video with a twist. Now, if I'm being honest, I haven't really been in the best place mentally over the last couple of weeks. Scratch that the whole summer. <laughs> now, when I'm deep in to one of these funks, it is really hard to get myself out of it. And my therapist actually suggested that I take time throughout my day to kind of inject a little bit of self-care and to do things for myself that just kind of make me happy. Now I've realized also with the help of my therapist that showing myself a little bit of self-love and also doing some self-care doesn't necessarily have to be like this huge big thing. And it's oftentimes those little things that you do throughout the day that actually impact your day the most. So I wanted to share with you guys all the little things that I've really been mindfully trying to incorporate into my day-to-day -day routines to just inject a little bit of that like happiness and joy. I would really love for you guys to share any little thing that you do for yourself throughout the day um, that kind of just brings you that little bit of joy. Um, I really foresee this comment section being a really wonderful place of like resources and ideas. Let's get right into it. Alrighty, so the very first thing that I want to talk about is a brand new hobby that I very recently introduced into my life. So whenever I'm feeling really anxious, my mind is a busy place. Like it does not shut up. And there's very few things that I find actually quiets my mind and allows me to relax. Now, the one thing that really gets me in like a flow state and grounds me is art. Whether that's drawing, painting, working with clay, art has always kind of been my happy place. It's always been my escape and I can literally sit down and draw or paint or do whatever for hours and hours and hours and just completely forget about everything else. So with that said, I was really wanting to try like a new craft that I never ever tried before. Now I've never really dabbled too much into like knitting or any type of like textile art. I knitted a scarf like one time when I was 12 years old and I never even finished it. But beyond that, it's just not really so much in my wheelhouse. So I decided to try it out for the first time. Now I've been seeing so many crochet videos on TikTok and it got me really intrigued. I had seen so many different ads <laughs> for this crochet kit called the Woobles. Over the last like couple of months, I feel like Instagram knew before me that I needed to have crocheting in my life. And so I decided to give in to the Instagram ads and purchase not one, not two, not three, not four, but five of these Woobles kits. So these are awesome because they are essentially beginner crochet kits. So each kit has every single thing that you need in order to make little plushies. So the kit has obviously the yarn, the crochet needle, any other extra little bits that you might need. And then in detail, step-by-step -step video tutorials that goes through absolutely every single step to create the plushie. And so by the end of it, you will learn how to crochet. So the first night that I opened up one of these kits, um, I crocheted for eight hours straight. Yeah. I've discovered that I love crocheting <laughs> so much. Um, what's so great about this little craft is the fact that it's super relaxing, but it's also not completely mindless. So it's not like you can just kind of allow your mind to wander as you're crocheting. You need to stay focused, especially when you're following a pattern, you need to focus in on the amount of stitches that you're using, the types of stitches that you're using. So your mind cannot wander off because then you will mess up. And what's so great about that is that my mind was thinking about nothing other than my crochet piece. Are you ready to see my first ever crochet project that I've ever made? <laughs> this is Fred the dinosaur. He does not have his little spikes yet, so he's a little bit naked. And don't look at his tail, it's definitely not perfect. But look at his little arms <laughs> and his little eyes. And for those wondering if crocheting is easy or hard, I mean, there's definitely a learning curve, but I feel like once you get the hang of it, then it actually is quite easy. Now, this is very new in my life, but I've already started to incorporate crocheting in my morning routine and my evening routine. So I've been waking up earlier than usual so that I can get in like an hour of crocheting before I start my day. And let me tell you, I've been starting my day very, very relaxed. And then at the end of the day, like all I've been doing is crocheting and I literally have to force myself to go to sleep because otherwise I would probably crochet for the entire night. But if you have a busy mind, wow, crocheting is it guys. It really is. So I just wanted to do a quick little check-in because the crochet obsession has escalated quite a bit. The one thing about me is when I get into a hobby and I even enjoy it even just a little bit, I don't tiptoe into it. No, no, no. I cannonball. My crochet collection has um, increased quite a bit and I just wanted to show you. So this is the current yarn situation. I actually feel like this is quite tame. I did 
only allow myself to buy yarn after I finish doing all of my woobles. And I have already finished crocheting all five of my woobles. I also ordered two crochet books off of Amazon, which I already wanted to show you guys to recommend because they are really, really awesome. So we've got Crochet Cafe, which as you can imagine, is how to crochet all these different food items. Like, I'm sorry. Is this not the cutest thing you've ever seen? And then Whimsical Stitches is a nice mix of like animals and flowers and food items. There's a bunch of different stuff and I actually already started the bunny. Um, let me show you my progress. <laughs> Wait a second, I'm actually realizing right now that I think Gus may have gotten to my bunny head because he's looking a little bit rough. His nose embroidery is all messed up, Gus! So little bunny may need a little bit of first aid, but we'll figure him out. <laughs> Also, I was able to revive my embroidery kit for my Hoppy Graveyard. I think like maybe a year or two ago, I got really into embroidery and I got all of this fun embroidery thread. So now that I'm crocheting, I am actually able to use all of these threads for my pieces. Also, little tip, I thought that something like this would be really silly, but it turns out it's actually really useful. So this is a little counter that you put on your finger like this. Really simple, you basically just press this little button and it counts for you, especially when you're doing a lot of rows at a time using the same stitch, it's really easy to lose track. So this is just a really easy way um, to just, you know, count your rows and not forget which row you're on. Guess, did you eat my bunny head? Did you eat my bunny head? Mm-hmm. You seem a little bit too familiar with that ear. Honestly, I should have known uh, cats and yarn do pair well together. I forgive you. I can never be mad at you. The next thing that's been bringing me a lot of joy is my Kindle. Now, I have always been a really big reader for my entire life, and reading is definitely one of the best ways to escape into your own world. I mean, that's literally what reading is all about. I've also always been a big physical book advocate. I never thought that I would be so into having a Kindle, but I'm not gonna lie, um, the Kindle side of TikTok sucked me in influenced me and I purchased a, a Kindle because it seemed like people were really, really enjoying it. And getting this has honestly been such a game changer for me and I feel like such a great addition to my life, not to be so dramatic, but it really has because I find that I've been reading more than ever before now that I have this Kindle. One of the best things about the Kindle is how portable it is. I can throw this in my purse easily. It doesn't weigh much at all. It's a really, really nice size. And it's just so nice to have this when I'm out and about. Because typically if I was out of the house and I had like any free time, if I was like waiting at an appointment or, I was, or if I was sitting at a coffee shop, I would be mindlessly scrolling on my phone. And I just find mindlessly scrolling on my phone is just never good for me. And instead of doing that, I've been taking out my Kindle and reading it instead. Even if it's just reading one or two pages, I feel like it's just such a healthier use of my free time. And it just injects that little bit of joy into my day. It's so wonderful. I just had to switch my camera because my other camera was dying. So if things look a little bit different, it's because I'm literally using a different camera. Anyways, circling back to the Kindle, um, I did also decorate my Kindle. I love stickers. These are all of my stickers from my stationery shop, Jamie Page Doodles. Um, if you didn't know, I do have a stationery shop where I design and sell stickers among other things. And I chose some of my favorite stickers in my shop as well as some like book related stickers. Really cute stickers, just generally speaking, they make me so happy. I mean, I'm definitely a little bit biased. I literally create stickers for that exact purpose. The tagline for my stationery shop is doodles to make you smile. And stickers are just such an easy way to add a little pizzazz to the surfaces that you see the most often during the day, whether that's a Kindle or your phone or, or your computer. I also got this little pop socket off of Etsy and it's so cute. Not the most comfortable, not gonna lie. It does kind of hurt my fingers a little bit, but it looks really, really cute. So yeah, ow. <laughs> my most recent book that I read was Big Swiss by Jen Began. And oh my God, that book was so funny. It, I don't even remember the last time I read a book where it literally made me laugh out loud. I literally would have to put the book down because it was making me laugh so hard. It was just a great read. All that to say, I'm a Kindle girly now. Okay, now going in a completely different direction, let's talk about a candle. I find for me, fragrance and scent could completely change my mood. Maybe it won't completely change my mood, but it will often just kind of give me that little bit of like, Hmm. And especially when I find a fragrance that I really, really, really love. Now, a couple months back, I discovered the perfume Baccarat Rouge 540. I would literally spray it on myself, even if I wasn't going anywhere, because it just made me feel so good. So when I discovered this candle, I almost lost my shit because it smells exactly like Baccarat Rouge 540. It is the salt and stone saffron and cedar candle. 
and it smells identical to that fragrance. I never light it because it will just sit there and it will still emit the scent and the fragrance all throughout my bedroom. So every time I walk into my bedroom and I smell it, it just makes me feel so good. Obviously smelling this is not going to completely turn my day around when I'm in a bad mood or when I'm not feeling great, but it does give me that little bit of joy. Fragrance is just such a powerful thing and I think it's important to use it to your advantage. Throughout my entire life, stationery has always been that thing that has brought me so much joy. The serotonin boost that I get when I get new pens, new highlighters, new notebooks, it's unmatched. The other day I, I wasn't feeling the best and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go to one of my favorite stores in Montreal, Nota Bene. And Nota Bene is a stationary lover's dream because they have a million different types of pens, highlighters, notebooks, like any type of writing utensil, they have it. Any type of notebook, they have it. And I just love going in there and literally testing every single one of the pens. Some of you may be listening to this being like, what? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? And then there's gonna be other people listening to this being like, I understand because I feel like this is a common feeling. So this was the notebook that I picked up the other day. It's from a brand called Maruman. I'll try to see if I could find it online and link it down below, but it's just a really nice, like clean looking notebook. Um, and I love the light grid pattern on the pages and the pages themselves just feel so nice and smooth and writing on them has been really nice. I've already started, already started taking notes, but you know, when you find the perfect pen and notebook combination, when the writing utensil just like glides and works perfectly with your chosen paper, it is the best. And it just makes your handwriting look better. It makes writing just more enjoyable. I pretty much hit that sweet spot with this notebook and the new pens and highlighters that I got. I, when I was there, I also picked up <laughs> some highlighters. This was a set of Stabilo Swing Cool highlighters. They're really cute, like pastel colors, which were really nice. And then I got these two little like pen Markers, they're called Le Pen. They're kind of like a pen marker hybrid, really, really nice to write with. I got a black and a periwinkle color just for funsies. And yeah, I got all this stuff the other day just to get a little serotonin boost and man, did it help. And then obviously actually using this and writing notes in it has just been so nice and soothing and relaxing. I've always really loved um, journaling and physical agendas and just planning things out by hand. And I kind of got out of that for a while and I actually find that it helps a lot with my anxiety when I write things out physically and not just keep it on my phone calendar. And so that's what I've kind of been trying to do with this and I've just been kind of doing my own version of like a bullet journal, I guess. It's been really fun and it's also just been a really nice like way to kind of empty out my brain on paper. Music. Music is probably one of the best tools that I use to like shift my mood. And it can also go both ways. Sometimes when I'm feeling really down, I'll like listen to really sad, melancholy music and then I will feel worse. Um, and so I actually have to tell myself not to listen to that type of music and instead listen to music that actually uplifts me, that brings me some joy. And the music that brings me joy mainly is Taylor Swift. Um, as you guys know, I am obsessed. I love Taylor Swift with every ounce of my being and the amount of times that I've put her music on my sound system in my house and literally danced around my house. I can't even count. <laughs> Whenever I need a real pick me up, I will literally run through the entire Eras tour set list um, from start to finish. <laughs> I also really want to suggest some other music to you guys. Charlotte Cardin's new album is incredible. She hasn't released the entire album yet, but what she has released so far has been incredible and it has been on repeat in my car. Like every time I go in my car, it's Taylor Swift or Charlotte Cardin's uh, new album. And every time she launches a new song, it goes into the rotation. I was actually at a music festival this weekend and I heard her live and she played a couple songs that I hadn't heard yet before from her new album. And oh my God, they are so good. And I cannot wait until I'm actually able to stream them. So I just wanted to give you that little music recommendation in case you want, you know, a fun vibe. Charlotte's vibe is starting my day on the right foot has been so important lately because if I start off on a bad note, it can really um, tank my day really quickly. <laughs> so I've made it a pretty big priority to create like a pretty solid morning routine. And one of the things that really gets me out of bed in the morning is making matcha for myself. I do it every single morning and just having that little routine has just been really nice. So that's definitely been a big one for me. And in case you're wondering, the peak matcha is my favorite. Of course, I'm a beauty lover and there is definitely um, something to be said about just kind of showing yourself some self-love and self-care by 
beefing up your beauty routine. And what I mean by that is like doing things for yourself that you wouldn't normally do every single day. Um, and for me, that is dry brushing. <laughs> I don't dry brush every single day, but when I do, I always just feel like it's such a nice, luxurious, like extra step to my routine that just feels really good, like physically and also I guess in turn mentally. If you don't know what dry brushing is. So this brush is like a really soft but dense brush. And before getting into the shower, I essentially do short strokes up my body like this throughout my entire body. So I'll do my arms, my stomach, my legs, basically anywhere that I can reach with this brush. It obviously exfoliates your skin. It's also great for circulation. Um, and it just feels really, really, really good. It's just a really nice way to add that little bit of extra goodness into your morning or your evening routine. It just makes you feel kind of special and like you're treating yourself and that's awesome. And it could be dry brushing or like rolling your face with a gua sha or oiling up your entire body, whatever it is. If it's something that's just kind of makes you feel like you're treating yourself. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about isn't a thing at all. It is my cat Gus and Gus brings an immense amount of joy into my life. It's literally gonna make me cry right now. He just makes me so happy. Like I am so grateful for him and his like presence in my life for my entire life. Like I never thought that I was necessarily a cat person. I, I always really liked cats, but I didn't know if I would ever see myself having a cat. I can literally make a three hour video about how incredible cats are. They're also so funny and quirky. And like Gus has so many little like things that he does that just makes me cry of like laughter every single day. So he definitely brings so much moments of happiness and joy to me throughout my day. And I'm so grateful for that. So guys, that is it. Those are some of my favorite things that have really helped me spark some joy and happiness throughout my days. I really hope that you enjoyed this type of video. Hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.